Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode on the channel, doing another mail day. It is Friday, so it's time to record another one of these videos. Now, one thing I'll quickly do as a programming note, if you caught anything on the channel recently, I did a live stream with Amish Dave Archer regarding mostly 1990s uh, hockey cards, but we definitely talked about other elements in the hobby. We even got into a little Pokemon conversation, so there was quite a bit on there, so you can certainly check that out on the channel. One uh, quick po note about that is it was on just clocked in at just a little over four and a half hours. So it is a bit of a beast. Uh, you probably want to check it out in pieces, although I did also add chapters to it. So you can kind of skip ahead to certain specific topics that we did move around a little bit. We did jump around a little bit back and forth, but I can tell you we talked about super collecting, player collecting, some of our favorite cards from the 90s, some underrated cards from the 90s, and some ones that we're definitely after, and a lot of hobby philosophy talk. So it was a lot of fun. Where Dave was a great guest, and also the chat was a lot of fun to deal with as well. So if you do want to check it out, it is on the channel. It's now there available as a replay, and you can check it out anytime you like. Now, one other note about this one, as far as this mail day is concerned, one other thing you may notice is that hopefully the audio isn't too disjointed. I actually recorded this using the new camera. I was trying out a little bit of a setup change, but the audio sounded absolutely terrible. So here's the first card, 1994-1995 Pinnacle. So this is the Boomer's insert from Pinnacle of that year. It's a, an excellent addition, and it's one of those inserts that I kind of deceptively didn't realize. And it's very 90s, that's kind of what I was talking about there. And I love that it's got the black jersey on it, so it's kind of a cool card. But that's one of those ones you wouldn't expect to be missing in the collection, but it was definitely one that I needed. And a lot of these ended up in the Z folios as well, which is something I definitely have enjoyed filling in. So the next card that's coming up here is a duplicate, actually. So we're looking at 1998, 1999, Paramount. So this is the Hollow Electrics. And you can see on the bottom and on the logo itself that it's got that nice reflective shine with the pattern on it. So I actually picked up two of them from the same seller uh, who had them for a pretty cheap price. I normally don't get these duplicates, but I did talk about that on the stream a little bit. And these ones are numbered to 99. So that's 72 of 99 and 90 of 99. So I was happy to pick them up for the collection for a couple of dollars. Next up here is 9798 Pacific Invincible. So this is the Emerald Parallel. And this is part of the video also where I was trying to fiddle around with the lighting a little bit because I really wanted to try to get a better view of it. It looks pretty good actually now that I'm seeing it with the voice, benefit of voiceover. But these Emerald cards are actually a little bit tougher than you think. Some of those parallels for Invincible, especially in that inaugural year, is kind of different. And the other thing is these are also see-through, which I'll be able to show you here in a second. Yep, there we go. So these are just kind of cool cards. And they're starting to look good in the binder, I can tell you from experience, as having already put them away. Next up here is 99-2000 Aurora. So this is Complete Players. So they've got two versions of this card, one that's kind of this blue and one that's a bit yellow. Also, they come in out of 299 and out of 25. So I already had the other version of the blue. And you can see on the back here, you've got a nice reflective... Uh, color with the purples and all this, all the shine, depending on how you move it. So now this completes this little mini section of it. I need one of the, uh, I need the out of 25 for the yellow one, but that'll be coming down the road here. But I got three out of four now in my possession. Next up here, this is Dynagon Ice 2000. This is Checkmates. So there are two different cards that I had for this. This one has Medano on both sides, as you can see, home and away. The other one actually has Darren Hatcher on the other side. So I believe the difference is one is considered the American version and one is considered the Canadian version. So that's the big differentiator. And again, you get the black uniform on there. A nice card to add to the collection for sure. Here we have 2000-2001 Aurora. Now this is actually the Stripes Parallel, which I try to make emphasis here. There's a bit of a different gradient on the other one, but this one is very clear cut. Once you see them side by side, it's actually very easy to tell, but I hadn't seen too many of the Stripe ones myself, so it was a little trickier, but you can see the Stripes on the left and on the right, and they appear as a pattern there. They look very different from the other one. At some point, and I'll do a showcase where I'll show the differences between the two. It'll be a lot clearer. This one here is 2000, 2001 MVP. So this is the second star card. And this is number to 100. So cut number 10 out of 100. These ones, especially from the late 90s and early 2000s for MVP, tended to be really tough. MVP was a long running series. And these lower numbered cards, later on, they became a little more common. But some of these early ones really kind of disappeared. And the superscript one is even tougher than this. But I definitely was happy to get my hands on this one. Now, I can tell you one other thing I was trying to trying to figure out is I wanted to take a look on whether the, the third copy, the one out of 25, is the first star or the second star. I believe it's the third star, but I'll have that on the screen for you. Next up here is 2001-2002 Adrenaline from Pacific. So you got the red one here, numbered to 54. The foil is there at the top and a little bit at the bottom. It's very light. So this is not a out of 54. This is the blue out of 62, very similar. And then the premiere date, which is also numbered to 62, a little bit lower there in its own box. 
Very nice looking cars, all things considered. A little bit busy. Obviously, it's adrenaline. I think they went with the style points. But cool looking cars beside each other. And it's always nice to fill them out like that as part of... Uh, I don't have it as Zvolio yet, but I plan to certainly in the near future. This next one here is kind of a hidden parallel if you don't know what you're looking for. This is from 2000, I think 12, 13. It's decades, 1990s Medano. So it's his international card. You can see it's the gold there at the top. That is limited to 30 copies. It's not numbered. There's the regular version that's more of a silver. Obviously, if you're not paying too close attention, there is a difference if you have them side by side. But if you're not paying attention, they can definitely be hidden away. Next up here, this one is also very much a hidden one. This is 2009, 2010, Victory. Very low end set, so you wouldn't think there'd be much to it. Obviously, it doesn't look like much, but this is the Upper Deck Victory Black. And these ones were actually limited for the veterans at 1 in 720 packs. So that's about as deceptive as it gets. If you think about it, there were 200 veterans in the set. So the odds of pulling a specific one were 1 in 720 packs. I don't know what the actual print run is on this. Uh, it's not clear anywhere that I've been able to find, but I can certainly imagine them being fairly low numbered, even though obviously the production numbers were pretty high. These just don't come up too often, and probably this is, I think this might be the first one I saw. So it's a nice addition to the collection for sure. This one here is the first from a group that all came from the same seller. So this is Franchise Players from 2002-2003 Parkhurst. It is limited to less than 100, but it's not the most limited. It's a nice looking card. It's probably the most plain of the ones that are going to come up here in the next few. But it's Franchise Players from 2002-2003 Parkhurst. This one here is one of my favorites from this mail day is 2001, 2002 top shelf. This is the patch. So this one is not numbered, but it is kind of a limited one and a nice looking patch with the star cutout as well. So definitely a nice looking card design wise. It kind of just works for me. Very straightforward in the way they designed it, but I think it's a good looking one to fill out part of that collection. And this next one is also from 2001, 2002 top shelf as well. This one is going to be the Jersey autograph here when it gets on the screen. There we go. And this one here is limited to 100. So it's the, it's got a kind of a gold accent in order to go with it. There's also a regular jersey version. But this is the parallel number to 100. A nice clean autograph. 2001, 2002 top shelf. This one here was a nice one to add to the collection. And actually completes my run of 2001, 2002 top shelf. For Medano, which is always a plus and definitely a fun thing. But those all came from the same seller. And these next couple are also going to be coming from the same seller. So we're going to be going with that theme all the way to the finish line here. This one here is from 2002-2003 in the game use. So this is the International Experience jersey card. A nice two-color swatch of jersey. But this is the gold version. So you can see that kind of the, kind of the cover and foil is basically gold. The regular version has kind of a silver or a gray if you want. But these are actually limited to 10. And much in the in-the-game fashion, they don't number them. So if you don't know what you're looking at, you don't realize this is actually limited to 10 copies. Super tough card. And this one is the big finisher. Also from the same seller, this is also 2002-2003. This is the All-Star Emblems. So this is from the Be A Player Memorabilia series. We got a nice, I would say, three-color patch card piece from the All-Star Emblems. I love that All-Star Game jersey that is, that is pictured on there. I think this is from the Vancouver All-Star Game. A nice patch piece. These are actually, again, unnumbered, but they are limited to 20 copies. Another very limited card, certainly, to add to the collection. And a great-looking card, from my perspective, Proud to add it, and just another one off that piece of the checklist that still is pretty long, but definitely we're chipping at it and getting some of those cards out of the way. So that brings us to the end here. Thanks as always for watching and checking out the video. Some really fun additions. Really have enjoyed kind of knocking some of these off and then picking up some of these great pieces. One thing I'll add here as well is that that brings us to 1,569 different Medano cards. So with the ones that I'm waiting on from eBay, that brings us just shy of 1,600. And that doesn't include some cards that are sitting in ComC. I'm probably closing in on my best guess, and I referenced it on the stream that I was referencing earlier in the video was that I probably have about 100 different Medano cards that aren't already included in some of these checklists. I don't count them yet because they're not in hand. But at the same time, I enjoy the fact that when I do set it up to send the shipping to come this way, it's going to make for a great video because right now it's closing in on 400 cards. So that could potentially be a really massive mail day and a really massive video. And Probably I'll try to arrange to get that done before the end of the year, and it'll be kind of cool to see the progress, especially as we approach year end, and then how that's going to affect the goals that I'm going to be looking at for 2021. As it stands for this video again, thanks for watching. Comments and questions are always welcome if you have anything you want to talk about, anything related to any of the things you've seen.
Lastly, I'll let you know that there are definitely some live streams and other videos that I've got planned coming up on the channel, so you can look forward to seeing that. And if you've got any feedback related to that as well, I'd be happy to take that in the comments in addition. That'll be it for this time around. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.